On today's episode, Tyler talks about the retirement herd around the world. We fact-checked all of our previous episodes for the month of August. I give Tyler a quiz on one of my favorite topics. And we talk about new music like Taylor Swift and Ed Sheeran, all coming up on the Segway Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Segway. The best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. That is right. Recording live. Where are we recording, Charlie? Well, we're recording in uh, Gazetta. Gazetta Hall. In Ak- in the University of Akron. The boys are back in town. <laughs> boys are back in town. This is so weird. This is so weird to be in it this is. classroom. It is. We did improv. In- I never actually had a class in here. I've had at least four. Dude, I barely, I spent like all my time here in Gazetta because we were in Theater Guild. But I never, I had like two classes ever in here. Actually, maybe just one. I I had a class with Aubrey. Oh, and and twenty eight. Yeah, it was like intro to acting for non majors. Yeah, I my had, freshman uh, year. I had a bunch of classes in here, considering it was a theater major thing. Yeah, yeah in, the, in like this classroom. <laughs> we talked about last week. We did. Go back and listen right now. We'll wait for you. Okay, you're back. So it's it's weird. There'll be a picture coming up today about uh, us being here on my camera, which my phone, which looks like it got Hulk smashed. It would be on that science podcast you talked about. Remember, you were like, oh, like if the Hulk oh, smashed yeah, yeah. the ground. Science, what was that? Because science. Because science. Science, yeah. What's new with you, dude? So, okay. So today, well, firstly, I, first, thing, first of all, I started my uh, my classes today. Gross. My first class. That's yeah. disgusting. Yeah. So it's going to be like... But that means football. <laughs> that was my neck. I heard that. Um. Yeah, so I've got like three papers to do. Not tomorrow, but yeah, sometime. You know how gr- I used to always associate back to school with football, so it's kind of like a crap. I'm going back to school, but here's yeah, the good football news. Story. And now it's just like it's just football. I mean, you ha- you have to work all year round, so your life still sucks. But it was like ah, football, and there's no additional work. It's I mean, just as a teacher, I'm not really. I don't really have that kind of same schedule as you. Well, yeah, well, it's okay. But anyway. you get summers off. Yeah. I don't get summers off. So. Yeah, I also get winter, too. That's cool. But so actually, what my story, my intro story is actually about um, my work. Oh, okay. I thought I was laid off. <laughs> Did they leave you on red? I <laughs> You're like, so, uh, so when do I come in? <laughs> no, I got an email. I was like, hey, check the new parameters for uh, substitute guides for Ohio. And I checked, and it said something about the you can only substitute in your post-secondary category okay. so if you like you were a science major oh so you can only do theater i talked to my supervisor i emailed her but it only took her like a half a day to get back to me that's not bad no that's not good. bad so well, it was only like a couple hours really it was, i texted a couple people and i didn't get a chance to text you yet i was going to at the end of the day and be like i got fired <laughs> <laughs> so they hire in her <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much so, uh, but you're not fired. No, I talked to her. She said I can still get a general education thing, but it was like a good time. I don't know. So, a couple hours where I was freaking out. So, essentially, what you're saying is, is the only way you would be able to work is if you d- did theater. Like, you would yeah. have had to do a theater class. That's what I thought. But she said that's long term substitution. I can still get a short term general. Okay. Yeah. That That's kind of a bummer, though. Like, what if you really like substitute teaching long term? Well, I mean, long term, just it, it, that doesn't mean what you think it means, I think. I, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. So, what that means, so short term means you can only sit in the classroom for like, they could have you for like a week at a time. Oh, you mean like, like if, for instance, like uh, a teacher goes in labor and they're gone for months and months. Yeah. Yeah. So, a long term substitute would take that. I almost had a job like that and then I, I couldn't because of class. Okay. Yeah. So, it didn't really matter for me that much anyway. Well, okay. So I could do long-term theater. That'd be kind of cool, right? I'd like to. Just start poisoning all the teachers and stuff and just take their jobs. Just theater teachers. (laughs) Took our germs. All right, so you all know this segment. We've done it multiple times. This is Sports Rant. Um, This is going to be like – it's it's actually – I'm going to squeeze three in here. Because we're going to – Yeah, I'm going to talk about Sports Rant. I'm going to slide – into another segment for like a second and and we're also going to talk about what we were doing at this time so you yeah. can because obviously if, if it was just sports you'd be like sitting on the sideline like it's that. just you talking at me at that yeah, point yelling screaming okay. andrew luck retired 
I let me let me paint you a picture. Um, I'm 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 at a hip hop show. Mo Turk was playing an Akron at Hive Mind. He wasn't up yet, so I'm walking around, and I and I just get this update on my phone. Andrew Luck retired. Now I'm not a Colts fan. I've never been a Colts fan. I always respected Peyton Manning, Josh Cribbs with the Colts. I have no problem with the Colts, but I have no I have no personal connection to Andrew Luck. But this is the most shocked that I've been in sports since probably LeBron came back. And even that, I had an inkling. Like, like there were little rumors that he might be interested in coming back to Cleveland. But Andrew Luck was the number one draft overall in 2012. He's only 29 years old. Like, it, now, now he's been hurt since, like, 2015. So there's, you know, obviously that's the underlying reason. Like, this dude's got his money. He went to Stanford, so he's smart. He has a life outside of football. He's married probably wants to travel the world or anything. So it's like, I get it, but it's just like number one pick. Like the Colts, everybody thought that they, this is their Super Bowl window. Like they are a good team and he's an all-star, arguably top five quarterback in the league right now in his prime. And he's just like two weeks before the regular season. He's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thanks. You that really good, the really good gif. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, which 250 people saw. It's off. It's fine. But like, and you know what's nuts is I get reporters have to, like they want to be the first one to report something. Like if that's your job, you want to be the first one to get it out there. So as soon, I think I believe it was Adam Schefter, the one that got it out on Twitter, which is how I saw it. They were in the middle of a game. They were mid game. Dudes <laughs> just on the sideline, like oh, everybody's looking pretty angry. Why are they throwing stuff at me? That's insane. Homie, they just found out you're quitting. Was he playing? No, 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 no. He's he's like he's still kind of injured. Like they were even talking, he might not even be ready to start the season. But their team was because of him and how good their team is. Everybody thought, well, that's okay. You know, we have Super Bowl aspirations, and 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 I guess he got booed heavily as he was leaving. And then a lot of people came back and were like, you know, that's not a good representation of us as a fan base. So let I me. Mean, do you want me to slide into the you done messed up, or do you want to talk about being at Mo Turk's show first? Let's talk about the show first. Okay. I, that was like one of my first hip hop shows. And I mean, I went to this millennial tour thing last year where there was like, if, if you were, if you had a hit single, like from the windows to the wall, oh, like, yeah, like, yeah. It, like everybody with a hit from like 2003 to 2008, there was this tour where they just like, Hey, you guys aren't doing anything. You guys just want to go and do our singles <laughs> together. And that was weird. Yeah. Um, but I really, I, man, T- Turk put on a great show. Yeah. I, I've seen, I've seen him perform like one time before. And it was amazing last time. Yeah, and and you get in with if you're giving Turk credit, you got to shout out Anthony and Logan too, because they oh, especially yeah. Logan. No offense, Anthony, but Logan killed it. He it's so funny. Like I don't love humor in rock music. Like you got a little Blink One Eight Two, you got a little No Effects, but I thought like it just in hip hop, it's so good. It is so good. Yeah. No, I know. I love Logan. With I think Logan is essential to most. No, the Turk set. Um, I think it's it's so, it's so fun to watch. Yeah, entertaining, energetic, and they they worked well together. Like you can see that they take the time to really get the things down. Yeah, they like play with each other on stage. Um, yeah, they do. <laughs> Let's move on. Do you have anything else about Turk Show? Uh, it was a good time. No, not really. The Flames. 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 Oh God. That's the guy's name. That was Oh, I didn't pay attention to anybody else's name. Oh, that was the last guy. Flames, oh God. After Turk went on, we went outside, we talked for a little bit, and we like started looking at our watches or phones mm-hmm. or whatever, and it's been like what, ten, fifteen minutes? Yeah. Yeah. And we're like, so is the show over? <laughs> yeah, I thought maybe I do was just like I'm out. Like <laughs> it's all good. I thought so too. And we all of a sudden you see these guys like rolling up and we're like, Oh, is this this is this is the guy, huh? He was pretty good though. He was good. My only problem, and I think it's more of a genre thing than it is like that guy specifically or anybody else. I have a hard time telling what's already recorded and what they're doing live. Where it's like that's my appreciation for like other music or like punk music, for instance. Like you, you can tell like, oh yeah, those even if they're not great. But I mean, the more not great they are, the more live you know it is. Yeah. And sometimes with like hip hop, I'm like, it's or, really polished. or even pop music in general. Are they lip singing? I have no like. I don't care if you're dancing up there, like you're part of the screening team at a Cavs game. Like I don't care if you're not actually singing and you have a mic in front of your mouth. Zero respect. Like I don't give a fuck. Like in zero respect. 
do it live or don't do it all. Yeah, that dude, um, he had all his lyrics on his thing. Like, they were all there. They were all overlaid. So he was singing it. Can like his said, lyrics, like, written out? So he wouldn't... No, they weren't written out, but they were in his music. Oh. Like, you, oh, were, you asked were me, is this, is this live? Or I was like, it's both. I think he was actually singing it, but they were also recorded into the track, too. Hmm. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It it, it, it gave it more presence. That's for sure. It, oh, it yeah. Gave it more presence. It put on a good show. It, and it, it's a matter of what you want. Like me going into it, like when I want, when I see live music, I want it to be live. I could, I would, ha- I would prefer more mistakes in knowing that it's live than if it's an absolutely flawless performance by no, like it's, it's essentially like putting on a CD player with 500 people around you. You know what I mean? Like I was literally about to say that. <laughs> That's what it is. It's like, all right, everybody gather around. All right, I'm going to hit play and let's go. Like, nah, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'll go down to the open mic down the street. You done messed up. Doug Gottlieb. Who's that? He works for Fox Sports. Okay. He, so I, I, I said I listen to Colin Cowherd. Every now and then when he's on vacation, Doug Gottlieb will fill in for him. Oh, okay. And he also has his own show after, after I think it's after The Herd. I'm not sure if it's directly after or not. But I've seen him cover. I've heard him. Like, I've heard him before. I'm familiar with him. After Andrew Luck retired, Doug Gottlieb posts on where he tweets out, retiring because rehabbing is, quote, too hard is the most millennial thing ever. Andrew Luck. Dude, I, 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 I know if you are in the opinion radio business, there's no difference between good exposure and bad exposure. Either way, you're getting ratings. Either way, you're getting hits. So part of me thinks that people like to do hot takes just because even if they're wrong, even if they know they're pissing people off, if it gets talked about, that's a win. You know what I mean? It's not about being right. It's not about being liked. It's about how many people are watching your show. I bet his show got lit up today. But like the fuck you talking about, dude? (laughs) Like this dude put in so much time. He got his money. I mean, it's seven years. Like, like if something's not working, if you're getting injured, if you're talking about your long-term health, how many years are you supposed to give a place? Seven years seems long enough to me. So what everybody's doing, which is really funny, is apparently back when he was in college, Doug Gottlieb, he uh, at Notre Dame, he stole somebody's uh, credit cards, his roommate's credit cards. Oh, wow. So everybody's coming at him like, oh, you know, stealing credit cards when working is too hard, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And it's like, I don't want to overreact because I imagine it's like a hot take to get hits. Like, I'm, I'm diagnosing it as that. I don't think he's actually, like, I don't think he's an idiot. And I don't think he's like that tone deaf or that bad at reading the room. I think it is for hits. But regardless, what a stupid take. What a what a way to get so many people pissed off to you. And he he, just, he was like a failed college basketball player. Like, he couldn't make it pro. So he just got into the radio business. Like, what are you doing talking about another pro and, and their life and stuff like that? And, like, equating that to being a millennial. Like, get the fuck out of here. And even though our podcast is small, like, even us talking about it is feeding into that. You know, it bit, is. You know? It is. So it's, it's like he, Tulpa. he did what he needed to do. And I'm acknowledging that, but I'm just saying I I think it was uncalled for. Like, there's a lot of players you can rip for a lot of reasons. And Andrew Luck, like, there's videos of him. He's such a nice guy. There's videos of him mic'd up. He'll get slammed and be like, oh, good tackle, buddy. Or he'll get just plowed and sacked. Him. Oh, that was a good hit, man. Like, he's such a good dude. I'm so tired of that millennial thing. I know. I'm so fucking tired of that. There's There are a lot of millennials that don't. I don't think handle things well and they, they um, externalize a lot of problems, but there are a lot of millennials that are grouped under that, that work hard. And we're just kind of given what we have, the scenarios we have. We talked about this last week when we were talking about the college dream and yeah. like do whatever you want. You can be whatever you want. It's it's every generation. It's not just us. It's every generation. There are good people and bad people everywhere. Every time. Right. It's how it works. I like I love those memes where they're like somebody's going in for a job and it's like, all right, minimum wage and we need you to have 30 years of experience. You know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, or a master's degree. Yeah. Like it's it's this is a topic for another day. Yeah, that's a that's an in-depth one. Yes. OK, it is that time of the month again. We are doing fact check. <clears throat> Humble time. Yeah. <clears throat> Football. All right. So first things first, we uh, I really don't remember exactly what we said, but we questioned whether or not Leo and Brad Pitt 
uh, had ever been in a movie together. Yeah. Never as like a main duo, like the two stars or even co-stars or anything. But in the 2015 film, The Audition, Leo was in it and Brad Pitt, I believe, was casted as himself. Yeah, um, that's what Matt said. Like I, I'd asked him about it and um, he said they were in it together, but not like really like taking up screen time together. So yes, um, but not really. Next thing, we couldn't remember the name of the ranch that takes place uh, on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Which, and in shame on myself, honestly. For Shame on myself. I went back and listened to those episodes of the last podcast, and I was like, Spawn Ranch. I know it's Spawn Ranch. I'm an idiot. Do you cry a little bit? Shame on me. So That's all is, I got to say. Yeah. So that is not the Schwerby Worby. <laughs> it is the Spawn Ranch. And uh, finally, for me, when I was talking about the Trevor Bauer trade, I was thanking him and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I only mentioned Puig, Yasiel Puig. Uh, I mean, you asked me to spell it, and I got yeah. it right, so I'm proud. Of, I spell-checked it correctly, but fact-checking. Uh, we got a couple players, but the main, the only other main one, which I didn't really mention that still like actually plays and contributes, his name's uh, Fran Mill Rays. So that's just you know minor detail, but hey, the, the whole point of this is to point things out, so I'm going to do it. That's a fun name. Yeah, which one, Yasiel Puig or Fran Mill Rays? I like them both. I don't know if I'm saying the last one right. This might be a <laughs> quadruple inception uh, fact, check. fact check for next week. Yeah, Maybe. I said Fran Mill Ray's wrong. So what I got is a um, couple people pointed this out to me about the uh, the Marilyn Manson Wait a minute. People talk to you about our show? Yeah. I'm in the fucking dark over here, man. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, yeah, I, I listened to it. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was, yeah. Brandon and Alex both decided they needed to tell me that I was very wrong. I think they both screenshotted it. About the Marilyn Manson? Yeah, about the band. It was not Dahmer. <laughs> it was uh, Twiggy Ramirez, which takes the name from the model Twiggy and also uh, the Night Stalker. In your defense, though, you were never planning on mentioning that on the pod. I kind of joked about it when you said we're going Manson and I said Marilyn Manson. So I kind of put you on the spot. So it's not something you... You weren't prepared to talk about it. I just kind of threw it at you. So <laughs> I'll, give, I'll give you that defense. You still fucked up. But <laughs> I'll give you that defense. Uh, I wonder if anyone was Dahmer. I feel like one of them was. I don't know. Um, and also, Matthew decided, I saw The Hateful Eight with Matt. Yep. Um, I did not see it on 35 millimeter, but I did see it on 70 millimeter. That means nothing to nobody. I promise well, you. There's more millimeters, right? Was it a bigger TV? It was a huge screen. Okay, whatever. You can see the the sound dude on the side holding the boom. Oh, <laughs> no wonder you love the cinematography. Fallout Four was not the last Fallout game. What was the last one? The last one that came out was Fallout seventy six. Really? Yeah, that's the newest one. Really? I said Fallout 4, you know, the newest game. But it was not. Oh. Uh, 76. Did that just come out? Because 4 came out in, like, what, 2015, 2016? I think I, I'm not going to answer because it's going to be another <laughs> fact check. Um, okay. But you were sure that 76 came yeah, out? Yeah, 76 came out after because I remember it was a big thing. Okay. Sure. Um, that was only a couple of years ago. So, yeah. Okay. You said, can you smell, if you can smell what the rock is cooking. Can you smell? Or just, no, sorry. If you smell, yeah, you said if you smell. I'm pretty sure it's just can you smell. Let's find out. We'll be right back. And we are back. It is not if you smell. It is can you? It is damn it. Yeah, it is if you smell. I thought it was can you smell. It's probably both. Like it probably is written down. Can you smell? But if you listen to him do it live as we just did, it is if you smell. I thought it was can you smell. All right. Well, you were wrong. Fact check yourself. The last uh, fact check is the name of the rock's wife. Uh, yes. Oh, Lauren, that's a good segue. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Lauren Hashian. Hashtag. Lauren Hashtag. <laughs> uh, Hashian, I think. Hashian. Perfect. Today, we are going to quiz Tyler on one of my favorite things. Uh, I don't have a tattoo on it yet, but I will soon. Harry Potter. And again, the stipulation is the whoever, whoever wins... The other, and by winning, like if I get three out of five correct, I win. If he can stump me on three out of five, he wins. Then the loser has to buy an appetizer next week at first week food. Yeah. Yeah. So if I win, you don't do well. Yeah. Yeah. If I get two or less, then you win. And if I get three or more, then I win. I just want to start. How much do you know about Harry Potter? Movies and books when I was very young. Have you seen all the movies? Yeah. I not I don't know them like you and Alex and them like know them like I, that's not my lore. I'm not right. even like I've even backed like there's like I feel like there's Harry Potter, 
There's Lord of the Rings, there's Star Wars, and there's Star Trek. I, I'm honestly, at this point in my life, not, not really too much in any of them. Most in Star Wars. But at this point, I don't, I'm not really like a rabid, I'm not a fanatic on anything at this point. All right, so let's, let's, let's get started. All right, give me a second so I can look these up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the first question. Oh, also let me just shout this out, that the rules are harder for me because he's oh giving me three god. options where his was very easily a 50-50. Oh my god, you're so, going to be okay. It's three. You'll be, you'll be do right. I get to phone a friend? Can I call Alex? I told you, yeah. If you want to, you, you, it's like Lifeline. You have three Lifelines. Okay. What I are, forgot the other two. What are the, what are the <laughs> Lifelines? You need to call Alex halfway during this. That's fine. Okay. <sighs> What's the other Lifeline? I'm thinking. You didn't think about this before? I did. I don't know what they were, though. Oh, okay. We talked about this. I guess you only got the one. So, I, okay. From your lack of prep, I get punished. Okay. Let's, let's go. <laughs> think let's about it some, I'll think about it some more next time. Okay. All right. So, the first, if you want to call Alex sometime, just yeah. tell me. Okay. How old was Harry Potter when he went to Hogwarts? Uh, the options are 10, 11, or 12. 11. That's right. That is the first answer. Ding, ding, ding. I thought you were going to take more time on that. I knew that one. All right. Let me write this down. Yeah, good idea. Not that it, there's only five. Okay, one. What was the name of Harry's owl? Hedwig, Hermione, or Helena? Hedwig. That's right. Oh, maybe I made this too easy. Shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what language does Harry Potter speak when he talks to snakes? Uh, snake speak? <laughs> Slitherness? Parcel tongue. Parcel tongue. Damn, it's a win. Fuck. I mean, it's too We're easy. getting lobster next week. <laughs> also, can I throw this plug in while yeah. you sweat and cry over there? Yeah. Um. Somebody, well, actually, I need your input on this. Who yeah. posted, was it Logan? Somebody posted a link that we're going to start following for the first yeah, food. Yeah, Logan posted it. Does he even know that we were doing that? I don't know. I think I'm going to mention it, but I don't think he knows. Okay. So two things. One, Logan posted this link that has all these different restaurants that are well known in Akron. We're going to start using those for first week food, so we're not just randomly googling and searching restaurants with two with five stars second thing and i want to do this because we've already talked about logan twice now uh if you go to his instagram which is yeah hold, please yeah hold please he ha- they have a short film on youtube and the link is in his instagram it's called hammy it's like low low shutting out low, low um low. lc metcalf go to lc metcalf on instagram and there's a link there for a YouTube, it's a, I believe it's a small short film, probably 30 minutes, that, that him and Anthony did. Or maybe just him. I don't want to give Anthony credit if he didn't do it. But I imagine Anthony probably had something to do with it. Probably. Probably a big part. I don't know. It's called Hammy. Check that out. I'm going to check it out. We're going to go to those restaurants. Back to the quiz. And uh, Anthony edited it. Oh, good for him. All right. So back to the quiz, just to top it off. Yeah. Unbelievable. I I went way How too How stupid did you think? I thought it was going to be I like, you didn't know in anything. episode four, when <laughs> Hermione's taking a dump. <laughs> I, could, I could have done that, but I, I wanted to take, I didn't, I All thought right. you knew nothing. Question four, I don't even know what the question is, and the answer is Moaning Myrtle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who does Harry marry? Oh, the Chinese girl. <laughs> uh, Luna? No. Jenny? Yeah. Or no. Tonks? Oh, no, it's it, it's Ron's sister, Jenny. Yeah. All right. I hate everything. He dated the Chinese girl, and she she fucking turned on them. She was like, they're they're practicing their spells in here. Actually, that's only in the movie. In the book, it was her friend. So, Charlie, nobody read read the books. (laughs) Uh, What is the core of Harry's wand? Unicorn hair, dragon heart string, or phoenix feather? Phoenix feather? Yep. (laughs) Fucking hate everything. I, 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 I. (laughs) Lobster. That's all. The only word you need to know is lobster, Man, extra butter. I gave you a ten pound, ten pound bench press right there. Just kidding. I'm going veggie. I can't do lobster. Okay. Fuck. Hey, and now it is the perfect fifth. I don't think we mentioned that at all in this episode yet. No, we have not. So this essentially, we finally hit one of those months where there is a fifth Thursday in the month. The second month. Is it the same? Oh, man, it is. Yeah, you said finally, <laughs> finally, like it's been like years. Finally, The Rock. Yeah, so there are five uh, weeks, five Thursdays specifically in this month. So the way we handle that, it's the perfect fifth. So we're going to talk about music. Unfortunately, uh, we were spo- we had an interview lined up. Unfortunately, they weren't able to make it. 
So instead, we just kind of whipped this up. It's still music related. Charlie and I are just going to talk about new music that has kind of been coming out yeah, recently. Fairly relevant music, at least. Like, um, well, not all mine's relevant, but it's newer. Okay. Ish, you know, within the last decade. Yeah, I got you. I'm just kidding. Like last year. Okay, mine's newer than that. Okay. Well, one of mine is very new. I only got one big album. That's all I got. One big fat album. It's pretty big. Okay. How do you want to? How do you want to go about this? Um, I think you go. Okay. Then I go. Okay. And then I go, and then you want to go back and forth? No, we can't. <laughs> I know. Okay. All right. Very very recently, a day to remember just released a new out a new song. Sorry, a new song that's going to be coming out on their album, which will be called "You're Welcome." Did you get a chance to listen to it? You're welcome. It's called Degenerates. No. Um, it's 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 what you would um expect. It's newer a day to remember. Mm-hmm. You know, where it's kind of like, um, like I'll admit, I, a day to remember is one of my favorite bands now, but I definitely got into them later. Like the people that probably started listening from Homesick or before, or probably yeah, are probably like, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah it's but it's like I it. I start like I started listening probably in like 2015. So like I, like Common Courtesy, which is actually one of my favorites by them, is like softer. But that's what I listen to first, and I actually like that more than their heavier stuff. So for me, it's kind of like, yeah, this is what I'm used to. It's like bad vibrations. It's good. It's kind of like I feel like they sing the song and they're like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to throw a scream in. And here's a scream. You know, it's kind of like, oh, yeah, we're supposed to do that thing where we scream. So at the ending, you kind of got that fit in. It's it's just, you know, it's catchy. It'll get stuck in your head. I, I personally don't love the content. It's about just like your friends being degenerates. It, it It's not bad. I like it. You know, it's what a did good, it come out? Um, I think maybe a week or two ago. Oh, it's really recent. Yeah, really, really, really recent. Like a week or two ago. And then actually, I think this came out uh, in June. Did you see their uh, collaboration? Well, actually, it's technically not them. It's Marshmallow featuring a data member. We talked about it. I had feelings. Yeah. Did you like it? No. No? I didn't. I actually like it more than their single that just came out. <sighs> uh, okay. Um, I, I didn't like much about it i liked parts of it yeah i know you don't agree with me but i feel like the only part they actually contributed that felt like a day to remember was the was it not it was a pre-course yeah but okay let me let me let me meet you halfway if a day to remember came out with a new album and this was a song from their album i'd be like whoa Like, no, are you having an identity crisis? Is this a midlife band crisis? I would be, I'm more happy knowing that they just did this thing that they're featured in and in not being theirs. Like, they were just like, let's just do this for fun. Like, looking at it as like a one song sample size where they tried something new, I really like that. If this was like, if it's called Rescue Me, if Rescue Me was their hit song off their new album, I'd be like, whoa like this is a major u-turn you know what i mean i i agree with that i understand what you're saying yeah i feel like it should have been more like marshmallow featuring jeremy i don't know his last name from a from a day to remember yeah but i know they wrote stuff too they probably did some of the music parts i know they, on, they're, <laughs> they're the stranded pre-course. on an island but they have their instruments <laughs> yeah good for them but I, I like i said the only thing that felt like a day to remember that they actually put a claim on was the pre-chorus. I feel like they wrote that part and then Marshmallow wrote everything else, which yeah. is fair. It's his song. Yeah. So it felt like it should have been more featured Jeremy. That, you know what? I accept that point. But I, I I would have to know what else the whole band put in to know. But it's like, if, if you said, yeah, did you know there were two guitarists, a bassist, and a drummer in there too? Like, mm, I'd say no. no not word. really. Get out of here. Do you know what Marshmallow looks like? I want to see his face. Well, I mean, I want to know what Dead Mouse looks like too. Yeah, I guess. Dead Mouse and Daft Punk. He's not the first one to do that. So, okay, this this wasn't my next point, but I'm just going to jump ahead into this because we're talking about collaborations. And I and I actually I was just looking up Tim McElrath from Rise Against interviews from recent. Like every now and then, I'll just be like Tim McElrath interview like 2019 or whatever year it is, just to see what the newest thing is because he's a huge inspiration for me, and he always has really good informative interviews. But so he had one recently, and he was talking about doing a collab with uh, Tom Morello, and I think it's it's Steve Aoki. I don't know how to say his last name. It's A-O-K-I, Aoki. So this collaboration between Tom Morello, who's a guitarist from Rage Against the Machine. Oh, yeah. He's also in, oh, man, Audio... Dead? 
No, 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 no. I don't know. Um, Audio Slave, maybe? Oh, yeah, Audio. I think you're right. Audio Slave? Yeah. He's also in that, but mostly Rage Against the Machine. Uh, Steve Aoki, which I didn't do any research on, and Tim McElrath. Steve Aoki must be in the EDM. Because mm-hmm. that's what this song is. Like, I, like he was talking about in the interview. I was watching the interview with Tim, and he was talking about doing the song. And he's like, he heard it, and he was like, uh, EDM is not really my thing, but I'll try and, and lay vocals over it. So I'm like, well, let me search this video. Dude, it is nuts. So anybody who listens to any, any Rage Against the Machine, any Rise Against, or, you know, Steve Aoki, that's probably not far from what you're used to. But look up the song, How Long. I think it's actually given, like, title to Tom Morello. But How Long. And it's just like this, like, heavy electric like dance beat like mm, 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 like thumping and then you just have tim's vocals over top of it and it's so weird you walked into it listening to it i actually listened to it before did I came you in. yeah i was listening to it because you posted on the band's page oh oh yes and i was listening to it. i was like what what is this i was like this is not tyler's thing what mm. I and mean, this is more my area yeah well you so you listen to it yeah or what let, let's have a conversation what do you think it was dope honestly yeah it's like, like, really cool the scream the build-up the repeat of the is that common for that genre to just have like a couple lyrics and repeat them yes very yes. much so yeah that's yeah that he, was that was kind of a like a house kind of music thing yes he, like skrillex have you listened yes, to skrillex yes. yeah that's sunny more right i don't know is that a song no that's skrillex Sonny, is that his name? Yeah, he used I to be know. in uh, From First to Last. Is that right? Mm. It's an old punk band. Oh, and then well, he heard his vocal cords, so then he started being Skrillex, I believe. Well, they, they, yeah, that's uh, they take like a, a thing and they make a song out of a thing. Yeah, I just like, I mean, I'm going to love pretty much anything, Tim. I, 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 li- I watched him do the Star Spangled Banner for a White Sox game. It's like, yeah, mm. I like listening. I just, having his vocal melodies over that is just kind of like, it was like, whoa. He was pretty good with it. So, I mean, yeah, I he's thought got he a great it. voice. He does. He, he has, I love when he has his interviews too, because he's always like, this is my talking voice during my interviews. And then you hear him singing. <laughs> it's just range is ridiculous. So, the last thing I'm going to talk about. Taylor Swift just dropped an album. Tay Tay. I believe the 23rd, maybe. Mm-hmm. That's Sweet. Right. So I, I just have a, a couple. Be careful what we say. We're going to get some. She'll <laughs> threaten us personally. I'm, I just a couple things I want to say. First of all, this is older, a couple months ago. But when the, her music video for me dropped and Brand, Brandon Yuri from Panic of the Disco is in it, it's like. I feel like new age me wanted to not like that, but it's just like, this is like, I'm thinking back to like 27, 20, 2005, I guess, technically Tyler, because my favorite album from Panic at the Disco is Fever You Can't Sweat Out, but just like Panic at the Disco, Brendan Urie is doing a song with Taylor Swift, and it was in this most, like this vibrant, surreal music video that was like Wizard of Oz, like, and I'm just like, what is happening? And I actually really like the song. Do do you have have you listened to any of her new songs? Yeah, I've listened to it. Uh, the one I like the most is um, the Calm Down one. Yeah, that, that was one. My that's favorite. I really like that one too. I I'll be honest. I don't really I don't love the song as much. Like it's not a song I would just play necessarily on my own. Like it has a cool beat. She kind of does her like play on rhythm and stuff. But like I love that she's taking a stand. Like you have this super It's her first time. Super popular pop star taking a strong stand in for like gay trans rights and everything and just I thought that was really cool. All right, I'm gonna let you finish. Okay, my last thing No, that was a joke. Oh you know Kanye did that many years ago. Oh, sorry, dude. But <laughs> it's okay. I didn't mean to kill it. So that was my favorite song. I didn't like me. I wanted to like me because yeah. I like Brandon Yuri a lot. I don't know. I, I I like Taylor Swift. I like her older stuff better. Yep. I really wanted to like it. I came in like, oh, this is Taylor Swift's new song. It's going to be so much better than the other one she just came out with. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of Bad Reputation. Yeah, that's what I mean. I, yeah. liked, I, I liked Red. And Red I was liked great. 1989 was good. That was fantastic. And then... Welcome bad, to New York. Yeah. It's been waiting for you. Um, oh, that song. Bad, bad Reputation was kind of like... Eh. Yeah, it was... Eh. I, just, I, I didn't love it either. I think this one's better. So when you get a chance to listen to it, it's entirety. Because I don't think... I think it's called Just Calm Down. Or, yeah, I no. Think, is, what? No, I thought it was called something else. It's called Lover. Lover. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the song you're talking about. Oh. Just Calm Down. I think so, too. That is not the best song, in my opinion. Oh, uh, that... Like, I'm, I'm saying this is a good thing. I'm saying you like that song. Yeah. And I think there's more good ones on the album. So I think you, I, you, should, give, you should give Lover a chance. I need to listen to it. I listen to it from beginning to end on a car trip. I hate so. the word lover. Yeah? I it's hate weird. it. It reminds me of an SNL sketch. 
uh, sketch. Skitch. Skitch. Skitchy. Uh, where they use a lover, like, continuously. Yeah. And ever since then, I've wanted to, like, throw up in my mouth ever since I've heard that. You know what I don't like? And I know a lot of people do this. I have nothing against the people that do it. I don't like the action. Maybe this is a hat up to here, but it's not worth its own segment, so I'm just going to say it now. When people call their significant other baby and dear, do not like it. Oh. Baby. I know a lot of people do it. A lot of people do it. I never will say, hey, baby, or like, hey, come here, baby, or like the deer thing. Like, deer is better than baby, but man, I do not. Or babe. Hey, babe. I use deer a lot. A lot of people do. Not holding against the people. It's the action. I don't like of it. But anyways, I just want to throw, I just want to throw these two out here. These are two songs that aren't super popular yet, but they're on the album that I really like. Cruel Summer has a really good beat. I really like Cruel Summer. And the second song, it's called nice to have a friend it's actually kind of chill and there's these background vocals in it that are really weird but i don't there's there's like this calming i had a really interesting emotional reaction to it not like emotional and like crying or sad but emotional in that it it elicited emotion in me and it's like simplicity i don't know like you guys check out nice to have a friend i think it's an underrated it just came out but so i guess nothing could be overrated or underrated yet but it's a low-key song on the new album that i really enjoy so that that pretty much wraps up all my crap. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut and you can you can drop some Yeah. You can drop some stuff on us here. Okay. So have you heard at least the singles from this? Let me talk what I'm talking about first. So I'm a bit really big fan of Ed Sheeran. Yes. I think everybody knows that. I don't know, maybe they don't. Have you talked about the poster on this podcast? I don't know. I, I think you should real quick. Okay. So our band's place has a, a my my favorite poster. Well, it's in my basement, and I put a bunch of posters up. And my favorite poster is one I got in college. It's just Ed Sheeran, black and white, just staring with a little smile. It's great. Do you remember when I told you that Ethan's little sister, Kelly, said, I look like Ed Sheeran? I don't see it. No, you don't. I don't either. I don't, well, I don't, don't see it either, but she said I did, and I was like, okay. I don't, I don't think you do. No offense, I guess, but... No, I think I look better than Ed Sheeran. <laughs> oh, I'm not kidding. Well, I mean, like, I mean, he, he it's part of his shtick. He doesn't think he's that good looking either. Yeah. He, you know, he's a knockoff Ron Weasley. It's all good. Rupert Grint. Do you know he was in that video? Yes. Okay. Did you see that video? Yes. So I'm just looking at the order. Like, there's so many. So this newest project he did was, um, it's a collaboration project. So it's all with other people. Like, Ed Sheeran's on every song. But I, don't, he, I don't love that. Well, I think he did it for a reason. He just finished a trilogy. In my mind, he just finished plus multiply and divide. Okay. And I think he's just kind of like, he wanted to keep working. Wait, what were the other ones? Plus multiply and divide. I think he should subtract some of his features. <laughs> what? His features? Like his face? The or? people featured on the... Oh, uh, well, no. That's not the point of the CD. Okay. The point is that he just wanted to do a collaboration with, I think, people that he's gotten to know in his in his field. I guess my big my it's not against him and I know I already I talked about Tim and Tom Morello and I talked about Taylor and Brendan Yuri and I talked about uh, what was the uh, day to remember Marshmallow I feel like featureings are just taking over music I know what you mean and it's good to net I feel like artists are like networking we've talked about this will be the third or fourth time we talked about it, but the Little Wayne and Blink Winnie Two tour yeah. I feel like artists are like how can I spread my music to other people. And other, you know, audiences. And yeah. I feel like now, I, I saw a meme once that was hilarious. It was like, man, this dude featurings in like every song nowadays. <laughs> Sorry, um, I, we go ahead, continue no, with your okay. ed, ed love. Um, I, I, my ed love. Well, I do, I do love him. I am a big fan of him. So I think that's why I still enjoyed this project, even though there was featuring so many other people. Okay. There was a lot of rap in this. Okay. Well, he likes to kind of, he has some rhythm with his singing he's got that ama- way. Like- he's got amazing rhythm. You need me, man. I don't need you. And uh, the man are two of these like really uh, heavily featured songs where he legitimately raps. And I, from a kid from England, he's got a crazy good flow. <laughs> Wait, so he has a song called "The Man." Yeah, I think Taylor has a song on her album called "The Man." I'm not a, not the biggest fan. A of the man, man or the man? The man, I believe. Oh, really? Yeah. That'd switch. be funny if they used the same song. If he was like on that one, and they just used it for both their albums, they're like, eh, let's just. Uh, <laughs> Let's just do that. I'll make it simple. Actually, I really hated that collaboration he did with her. Yeah, I hated that. I didn't think that was very good at all. Do you ever just look at Ed Sheeran and be like, Ed? His name's Ed. He doesn't like it. Like when you say Ed Sheeran, I see him, and that makes sense. But if you just look at him and be like, Oh, hey, Ed, 
And then you think of what what the name Ed, like when you just hear the word Ed, well, like what you think of. He doesn't seem like an Ed. I mean, I me. have two, I have, I have two affiliations with the word with the name Ed. Before. That makes sense. Yeah, with my uncle, who does my taxes. Yeah, <laughs> and then Ed and my derpy friend Ed. But so. it's just like when I look at him, I don't think, oh, that looks like an Ed. I don't know. It fits for me. All right. Maybe Scott. I could see Scott. Scott Shearing. Let's have a conversation with him. Uh, Scott Shearing. Scott Shearing. Cardi B is on one of the songs. Oh, I don't like Cardi B. <laughs> I, I, she's fine. Yeah. She's not my thing. L- give me, l- what are some of the featurings? Cardi B. Eminem. Khaled, who's pretty big, I think. There's a couple of British rappers. I don't know their names, but they're really interesting. Beebs that was on the radio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't care. Which, got, oh my God, people did not care about that song. Yeah. Travis Scott, which is really cool. I like that song a lot. Was it good? Yeah, the music video is weird. Like he gets stung in the eye with the bee. Ugh. And I was like, I feel that pain now. The only thing I know from Travis Scott is Sicko Mode with Drake, and I don't love that song. I like it a lot. Yeah. I mean, that's why I like the Travis Socks. Travis Socks. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like the Travis Scott song so much. Scott Shear. Uh, Fifty Cent. Uh, young Thud, Thud, <laughs> Young Thud, <laughs> Young Thud. <laughs> I don't know who her is. That was that movie with uh, Yoki Walking Phoenix. Oh, Skrillex, Speak of the Devil. Nah, Bruno Mars. Oh, really? He has a song with Bruno Mars. Mm-hmm. What's that one called? Mm, Blow. I'm gonna have to check that one out. I like. I get down with Bruno Mars. I fuck with Bruno Mars. I mean, that's all like the real big names. Yeah, but okay. that's a lot though. How many songs are on the album? You Maybe can give a rough estimate. Fifteen. Okay. Fifteen songs. Okay. But yeah, like there's a lot of rap. Like he's rapping, and there's other rap. Like he's got a, a big rap influence. Like one of his earlier songs is him like doing his own song, and then he does a cover of um, Fifty Cent's "I'm Not Into Making Love, I'm Into Having Sex." You know what I'm talking about? Um, maybe if I heard it. Shorty in the club. Oh, but it's one of uh, 50 Cent songs, and he goes back into his song. So he's, okay. he's had that kind of influence since he's started, uh, since Plus, before he was, like, really blew up. Okay. Like, I'm, like I told you, I'm a big fan of Ed Sheeran. Yeah. I've been, I've been listening to him since 2013, 14. If you had to recommend one song for people to listen to from the new album, what would it be? The new album? Yeah, the one you're just talking the about. The one I was just talking about? Uh, Take Me Back to London. Take Me Back to London. Yeah, that Who was really good. Is, who's featured on that one? Those two British rappers I was talking about. Okay, cool. Um, that was really good. But Beautiful People is nice. It's a nicer song. The Beautiful People. The Beautiful People. That's about Khaled. It's about how it just... DJ Khaled? Not DJ Khaled. Khaled Head or... I can't remember. <laughs> oh, I thought you said Khaled. He's like more R&B. Ed Sheeran has one song featuring DJ Khaled where it's just three seconds long. DJ Khaled! <laughs> and he goes, oh, in the background. And that's it. Yeah. Classic. DJ Khaled and Ed Sheeran were both on uh, Little Dicky's uh, Swapping Body song. I, I don't know what that Freaky is. Freaky Friday. Okay. Scott. Scott is Shearing coming on a couch near you. So that is the end of our first Perfect Fifth. Yay! <laughs> yeah, not, not exactly what we planned, but again, we understand uh, things come up. You know, things don't always go according to plan. So thankfully, we were able to prepare something else music related for this perfect fifth. I think I believe the next one is maybe November or October. There, there's another one coming up the, that has five Thursdays. Yeah, it's October, but we're not doing perfect fifth. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Let, talk about that real quick. Teaser. All right. So we're going to not do the perfect fifth for Halloween because we decided because it's perfectly coming out on the Thursday of Halloween. We're going to do a double paraformal. Yeah, we haven't completely fleshed that out yet, so we'll have more details coming soon. I am so excited for Halloween. It's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or not, um, so I'm just going to say it again now, and if I did, I apologize. I'm repeating myself. We have our high five list coming out. It'll be five school subjects, your favorite school subjects. You'll get to choose from uh, science, English, history, math, and gym. Uh, it's on all of our social media platforms. It's already out, yeah. It's already out. It's been out. So if you already responded, don't be like, well, why are you telling me to do it again? <laughs> don't do it again, Parker, Alex. Just chill. Everybody who hasn't done it yet, please come out and do it. Share it, actually. If you've done it, share it. Yeah, that's your responsibility now. We're giving you another job over time. Time and a half. <laughs> Pro bono. So yeah, share that, please. Um, as always, share the content if you guys are enjoying it. Share with a friend. 
if you don't have a what five stars five stars if you don't have a friend make a friend then share with them you'll probably you can make a friend over the podcast that would be fantastic i would i would actually that would make my heart happy would it yeah it would make my heart happy if they share it i don't care what happens (laughs) after that if you want to do things after that that's on you but as always this is the segue the best thing to happen to you on a thursday That's fine. <laughs> we are. Oh, that was loud. That's Jim. We are. Uh, <laughs> did he wave at you? Hey. Hey, Jim. What's going on? Uh, uh, podcast. A recording a podcast. Yeah. There's a lot of cats in my house. Yeah. It's a lot quieter. Here. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>